The last principle of discipline in Senge's learning organization is systems thinking. So in our scheme, we've developed a new future. We're challenging the old mental models. We're not saying what we aren't anymore. We're saying here's what we need to be in the future. We're sharing that vision with employees. We're getting you to become experts at your jobs so you can improve and then we can improve. You need to work as teams because that's when change and creativity happens. And lastly, we've got this uh, last bit, systems thinking. So in our acronym, most valuable player team, we're up to S for sports or systems thinking. What does that mean? It means that the people in the business think of it as a connected system of departments, processes and teams, not as separate areas which are not related. So people must understand each part of the system and how the parts of that system fit together and then we can adapt and change. So each person basically understands their role within the system and says, here's what, how what I do affects other people in that system. And we call those internal customers when we looked at that at Total Quality Management. Uh, same thing. So you mightn't have any, you might work at, say, Apple in designing software where you don't actually interact with any people who buy the phone. But there's other people in the business who rely on you to do your job well. They're called internal customers. So we want to adopt that mentality. So looking at some examples, we look at one great revolutionary business change. 2007, Steve Jobs says, it's going to sound crazy, but we're going to release a brand new product today. It's going to replace three other products, but I think we're going to earn a winner. It's called the smartphone. It's going to change the world and change our business. Okay, well, that's like one person called the CEO, but it wasn't just one person or department who came up with that change. And like, it wasn't, he didn't do everything that needed to be done. We learned that there's different areas of responsibility or departments in a business, operations, finance, human resources, sales, marketing, IT support, in the real world, there's even more. And they don't always have these names, okay? But let's just take that smartphone. So in a learning organization, we come up with a new idea and we say everyone in every area of the business is continually evolving and changing. And any change doesn't happen in isolation. If you release the iPhone and you think because you work in human resources, this has nothing to do with you, well, you're wrong because everyone is linked to this system. So if we take this example and take the iPhone in 2007, well, everyone in every department and every team at Apple needed to come up with sort of needed to adapt to help, help this change succeed. So we take operations. How do we design the product? What does it look like? What technology needs to go in it? How can we make it? Where do we get the parts? And where are those suppliers? So they need to be a part of this. They're part of the system. What about finance? Finance is the one where you look at it and you go, what's that got to do with releasing a new product called the smartphone? Well, it's got a lot to do with it. They need to figure out, will this profit be, product be profitable? Should we even make it? How much will it cost to make? Can we make it cheaper? And should we even make it? Like, do we have other products that make so much profit that we should focus on those? Well, we don't want to think like that in the learning organization, but that's a question that will get asked. Human resources, that's part of the system. If you come up with a change to make a product called the smartphone, do we even have the people and the skills needed to design and develop that product? And if we don't, how do we get them and where do we get them? Do we train our own people or do we bring people in from other businesses? Sales and marketing, big part of the system. Who's going to buy the product? How much should we charge for it? Where should we sell it? How should we market and promote it? Apple's always been the master at that. So anytime you release a new product with Apple or any business, really, you've got to think about how would you sell it? Uh, and does it fit with our overall brand? And lastly, we've got the IT support. Do we have the IT we need in the business to make this product? It's not designed by hand, is it? It's done by advanced computer design systems and so on. So we need the people in there. And can our people even use this technology effectively? And can they get help if we do need to help them use it? Uh, also, once we have made it, we're not going to sell it just in stores. Or even if we are, we've got to keep track of all the units. Do we have the IT systems needed to sell and distribute this product? So one simple change, well, not simple, but a big one, the 2007, the iPhone. Well, it's not one thing. It's part of a system. The whole system is the all the areas of the business and everyone's got to do their bit. Every department relies on each other department to do their job. And that's a key part of the learning organization. It's called systems thinking.